All right, masterclass on chords in machine. We're going to mostly be looking at chord mode. Bookmark this one. It's going to be a resource for the future and hopefully answer all the questions that you might have about chord mode, whether you're a very beginner with chords or whether you're more advanced with this kind of stuff. So no fancy songs here, but let's just crack right into chord mode and learn all about it so that you can make the fancy stuff. So first off, when you load a sound, right now I've got a Scarby Rhodes here. And with machine, you press keyboard mode to get individual notes, and then you press chord mode to get chords. And right now the default is set to a chromatic scale moving up this way with all major chords going chromatically up the keyboard. It'd be like going... So normally what you would probably do is go over here and say, all right, I'm going to set it to main and I'm going to set it to either major or minor. Those are going to be the most common ones that you would start with. If I set it to major, the next option that we have is the mode. And here we've got either harmonizer or chord set. So it's going to give you a certain set of notes above whatever note is listed here on the pads. So this, of course, corresponds with the pads. So we can see we've got one, three, five coming up from this C. And if we go to the next note, we've got a minor chord. And the reason we have a minor chord is because we are in the key of C major. So this is where we define the key over on the right hand side. And this is where we define whether in C major, C minor, etc. So if I want to be in D minor, all I have to do is take this up two semitones, set this to minor. And now the first chord is going to be a D minor chord. Same thing as this. Just a triad. One, three, and five. So when we see type right there, that's what it means. One, three, five. The first note is the one, second note, third note, fourth note, fifth note. So that's where we get one, three, five from. If I go right here, I can change this to one, four, five. So that's going to be something like this. If I play that, you hear those notes. If I go to the E, it's going to be like this. Same thing. It's kind of crunchy, but that's exactly what's happening. It's just moving up the D minor scale. Let's make it a little easier on ourselves. Let's go back to C major for a second. So I could be one, four, five in the key of C. If I start on this note, it's one, two, three, four, five. One, four, five on that one. So that's what these numbers mean. They refer to the chord tone using the one as whatever note you're starting from. So if I start from a G, that we call that, we think of that as the one in this situation. One, four, five. Moving up the scale, moving up C major scale. Four, five. One, four, five. And then if we go to something like one, three, five, seven, that means that every note that we play is going to have a root, a third, a fifth, and a seven, as long as it's in the key of C major. So because I'm in the key of C major, every single chord I play, start on an F, one, three, five, seven. We still get the seven. If we go to this one, it's a different type of chord. We actually call that a dominant seven chord. But that's okay. It's going to automatically do that for you here on the keyboard. So one, four, there's that dominant seven chord. And then there's an A minor chord and so on and so forth. So I have an old video where I will point you to, and this one I'll put in the description, and that goes over some neo soul type chords where you are using something like the one, three, five, and then you're adding one more chord above it just by playing two different chords at the same time. So it'd be like going like this. Let's go back to the key of C. It'd be like going like this. Going C, and then adding another triad right there. Because all we're using is triads, one, three, five. And in fact, we could go one, three, five, and then do another one right here, one, three, five. And then do the same thing up here. And so you can get some really crunchy chords by taking something simple like the harmonizer and combining them. There we go, this sounds really neat. get some complex chords by combining just simple triads at the same time. So there's a there's a really fun chord tip and if you want a little bit more detail on that go check out that other video the Neo Soul Chords on Machine. So that's using the harmonizer and then here down at the bottom we've got some more weird ones and this 147, 147 
It's really interesting because it's based on fourths. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four intervals. And actually, Miles Davis has a song. We call that chordal harmony, not chordal harmony, but chordal harmony. And so go listen to So What and tons of music from the 50s, 60s jazz era where they're really exploring modes. And we won't worry about modes in this one, although we can look at them here over on machine. But let's not worry about that right now. Maybe another video about that one day. Now we'll look at the chord sets. And the chord sets, the way they work, they've got eight major chord sets and eight minor chord sets. And these chord sets are all arranged out here on the pads. You can see up top what chord they are, exactly what chord they are. So if you aren't a keyboardist and you ended up using some chord set, and you'll hear how these chord sets, they really work well with each other. So, and they get more complex as you go through them. Start adding some more different types of chords and we'll look at what these chords are later on. So if I look at major six here, we can see we've got C, G, D minor, A minor. Can you hear how those chords work nicely together? So it could be a really great way for you to start off a song. You're kind of feeling at a loss for what to do. Instead of going to a loop, you go to a chord set and now you're getting inspired by the arrangement of these chords that whoever put them into machine uh, did. And I got to say, the chord sets are great. They work really well with each other. The main thing, this is complaint numero uno and wish numero uno for me with machine is that they would add the ability to make your own chord sets. Because if we could do that, we could make arrangements of chord sets for people for different genres of music. You could have a neo soul chord set. You could have an EDM chord set. And the ability to have that in machine would just be incredible. So Native Instruments, that's my number one request. I know that sounds weird, but it literally is my number one request. You can almost play through them. All right, it's getting a little, little cheesy up in here, but... And, and if we go to the major eight set, that's where you're gonna really find the, the complex jazz chords. Yeah, these are working so well together. One quick tip on what you could do to change this up. There's no way to invert the chords. That's where you take a chord and move the notes up and play higher up the keys or down further down the keys. We want to make this a little bit more interesting. But what you could do is take, say, this chord right here that's got the same chord. Let's just take this note right here and move it up the octave. So right now it's an F. And if I hold Option and press up the keyboard, boom, we've just moved it up. So now we've got... And then maybe you want to take this one, separate it, change it up a little bit from the other one, hold Option and move that down the octave. There we go. Now we've got a different inversion of the right hand. Or... Okay, and then what if we want to take this and flesh this out, maybe put it with some bass? Well, no problem. All we do is copy this pattern over here to our bass instrument. I've got a little bass thing loaded up there. I'm gonna delete all of the top notes. So now all we have out down here at the bottom is the root note or the bass note. A little too low. So let's take these up the octave. So we'll move them up right there. And now that you have the bass line, here's a really easy tip. All you have to do is take your note and either play it up the octave and maybe cutting the note where a bass drum hits. There's a bass drum hit right there. So what I'll do here is just resize this and then option drag or alt drag this over. I'm just going to draw in another note, the same note an octave higher, and then we'll resize it like that. There we go. 
And then I'm going to cut that out and then just keep a boom. So we've got two bass drum hits right there. And then I'm sometimes dragging your note out until the snare hits and then cutting out at the snare is another nice tip for getting a sweet little groove. Let's shorten this guy. And then maybe one more note right here that's nice and long. Or just take that up the octave. Boom. So that's making a bass line out of the bottom note of whatever you put down on your chord tracks. So you don't even really have to keep track of what chords you were using. Another thing to keep in mind is you don't have to stick to just one chord set on your song. So here we did this, you know, intro part in the key of C major. Well, you can learn about relative majors and minors and C major, the relative minor is A minor. So we could actually set this now to A minor, which happens to be all white notes as well. And now we could go to a minor set and come up with a totally different section of a song that's really got a minor feel to it using the funky minor chords that they have here in the chord sets. All right, so we've got minor. As we go through the complexity of the minor sets, by the time we get to minor eight, we're into the really funky jazz stuff. So now let's just talk about these chord numbers because that's kind of a big part of these chord mode and it would really help you to have some understanding of what you're looking at with these different hieroglyphics here. So if we go back to the, the major set for a second, so C major, E, M, I is E minor. If it's just F, it's just an F triad. So whenever you see just regular old F or G, that's going to be G, B, and D. When you see just the letter, it means major without any other extensions. So we don't have a, a seven, or later on we'll get nines and elevens and thirteens. Next one we see is a sus four, and a sus means suspended. So it's kind of like we've got one note that's being held up, or so that's what the sus can do. The sus chord can go either from here and resolve down to a regular old E minor, or it could go to a major, to an E major. So we've got E sus4 to E minor right there, so we could play those together. You can kind of hear what's happening, but that's what the sus means, sus4. Next we've got the F add nine. And that's where we add this extra note in the, in the G, triad. So here's the G triad. We add the nine. We can put it wherever we want. And what that means is we've got one, two, three, four, five. There's our triad. Six, seven, eight, and then nine. There it is up there. You sometimes see it written as, you, you might sometimes see G two or add two. And so it just depends on the chord. Usually when we see a nine, that usually implies a seven. And in this case, add nine just means a G, but only add the nine. C over B. So we've got a C. And then we go to this one right here. F add nine. So I'm just following all four of these chords. Watch what happens. We just keep dropping the bass note. And we keep that nine up in the top. And then it goes to F minor. This, this electric piano just feels like, like an old 80s TV show or something. All right, so let's hear that together. So you can see what, how that this chord set works so well with itself. The slash chord again just means there's a different note in the bass, but this top chord is all a C major chord. C with a B in the bass, with an A in the bass, with a G in the bass. And then we get to the add nine. And then we get to an F minor. And then we get the C sus four, where the four is in there, suspended. And then we got A minor seven. So that's just A minor, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we add the seven in there. 
F, and then we've got a G6 chord, which is just a major triad with the six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's all that's happening there. Now let's look at the more fun chords. Let's go way down to the minor chords and we'll see if we can make sense of some of these. In this case, we see C minor, six, nine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's a cool chord. Let's pick up the octave. There it is right there. Then we got D minor seven, flat five. Now what does that mean? We would take like a D minor triad, one, two, three, four, five, and when it says flat five, or looks like a B5, that means flat five, we, we make this five note flat, and then we add the seven. Really cool chord. And that one's also called a half diminished seven chord. And then next we've got C minor 11. So where's the C minor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's the eleven over a G. <laughs> Man, okay. So let's go eleven, something like this. And then we got C minor nine. And then if we look at some of these other ones, there's another minor seven flat five, just like that one. And then we've got A flat major seven sharp five. So there's A flat major. And now let's take the five, and instead of making it flat like we did with that other chord, we raise it. Next one we've got G7 flat nine flat 13. This is one of my favorite kinds of chords. So we've got G7 with a flat nine. So where's the nine? Seven, eight, nine. So we flat it, and then we've got a flat 13. Where's the 13? There's nine, 10, 11, if we go down here, 11, 12, 13. So the 13 is an E. We make it flat, so the, the funky notes in here, G7 with a flat nine, something like that. So something like this, and then minor major seven. So what we've got with a minor major seven is we've got a minor triad with a major seven. Usually a minor triad would have a minor seven, and this one's got that James Bond sound. A spy movie sound. Um, and then you do C11, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So the eleven would be the D. Really beautiful chord. Really clustery kind of sound. I do have a jazz 251 video, which is definitely worth mentioning here, and that's where I talk about. 251 progressions and how they are so important to jazz music. It would definitely be worth having some understanding about that kind of stuff. In my last machine expansion video, which was Electric Touch, I show you how to take a chord progression and look for a whole bunch of different versions of that chord through the chord sets, sample them onto a track, and then turn that into audio. So that one is worth watching. I won't repeat that here, but go back and check the Electric Touch video. I've even got it bookmarked for that specific little tip. And it's very important. So here's another little tip that you can do with chord mode. I actually did this in my live looping video, which I'll put, a I'll put in the description. And I've done this with chord mode. I've also done this with the scales. You can play around with these complex chords and do what we call parallel motion between chords. And in sort of this chill lo-fi stuff, a, a really common technique is to take one chord with interesting voicings and just shift it down one semitone. So all I'm doing is one minor triad moving down to another. Or what about a major one? Let's, I'm going to take a major nine chord with the seven and the nine, and I'm just going to shift it up. And then just shift it down. So that could be a bit of a, uh, like an intro to a song on its own. Let's go to major eight for a second. And we're just going to play along. All I was doing was moving the semitone buttons on the fly. 
and would work really well in a live performance situation as well. Last little tip is, of course, you can play your chords in. So there's our chords, but what if I want to take the chords and just kind of play around with them a little bit so they don't sound so perfect? Well, then we could go over to this variation button. And so if I click variation and lock it up at the top, go over to velocity range and time shift, and that's just gonna move them over ever so slightly. So I've got it set to humanize, not random. Random's gonna do some really funky stuff, and uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but with this humanize, now what we can do is set our time shift to something like five or 10. And if we hit apply, and also make sure your, your low velocity doesn't go too, too far down, or some of the notes will get moved really low. Right now we're at about 105. So I'm gonna set the low range to about 98 and the high range to 127, maybe 124. And then I'm gonna hit apply and all of the notes shift over ever so slightly. We could try it one more time and watch the velocities as well. You see them shift. But you get the idea. If, if one note is just a little bit too far over, then you could just click on it and drag it over. And make sure you hold Command or Control on a PC so that you can move it over without snapping if your snap is on. And then that way you can sort of fix any of the notes that just went a little too far, maybe one way or the other. So there you go, chord mode in Machine. It is an incredible feature and would be even better if we got our own custom chord mode in the future. So I'm really hoping for that. But even with what we have right now, there is so much you can do with it if you're not a piano player. And if you're not a piano player, use the chord bone, pay attention to what chords you're actually using and see if you can start remembering that stuff and then maybe start practicing the piano. I'm a huge proponent of practicing. I practice instruments every single day and I have a bunch of instruments that I practice and I don't practice for a long time, but I practice every day. And it's either I'm maintaining or I'm getting better, but I'm rarely getting worse at my instruments. And it means that I can pick up these different instruments and play them on a song when the inspiration strikes me. And then it also means that I am going through phases where I'm getting a lot better at maybe one of my instruments. So highly recommend practicing. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell, and we'll see you in the next video.